What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're doing a video that's a bit different than normal. We're actually gonna be filming inside because it's really cold outside right now. The wind has been really bad for the past four days. We know you guys hate the wind noise, so we're just filming inside our house. Mind the occasional dog noise, but we'll try to get past that. So today I wanna to talk about a topic that came up a lot in the comment section of a couple of previous videos. Uh, for the last few videos, we've had, Beretta M, we've had a Beretta M9 clone and then I've been discussing Berettas in a couple of other videos, including uh, the 10 guns that you would bet your life on. And the reason why the Beretta didn't quite make it into that video is sort of the reason why we're making this one. So I wanna talk about a couple of things I don't like about the Beretta 92 or Beretta M9 series. Now that doesn't mean I don't like the gun for all of you follow the channel, you know I absolutely love the gun. As a matter of fact, the previous video to this, we were shooting a Beretta M9 clone at 120 yards. <laughs> uh, they're a very capable platform, but they do have some quirks to them and some issues that I really don't like. Some that you can train through and maybe some that you can't. So I wanna go over that today and I wanna specify again that the Beretta M9 is a good gun. It has a great track record. It was adopted by the US military in the 1980s. It served very well, but it did have some problems and, and that ended in the gun being replaced by the SIG P320 series. Now before we get into the video, I do wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. The Patreon guys bought the guns that you're gonna see on the video today and we really appreciate that. If you wanna support the channel, that's the best way to do it. There's a link in the description to sign up. Also, you can send us a super thanks. Some people don't like Patreon. That's fine. Super thanks is YouTube's version and it buys guns and ammo either way. A lot of you guys have been using that lately. We really appreciate it. It helps us produce all the unbiased content that you see. There's no strings attached for the industry for us and that's because of you guys. I also want to mention a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. That's also in the description below. If you click that link, it'll bring you right to the donate page. It's getting cold out here in Iowa. It's a local shelter. I'd really appreciate it if you would donate to those kids. They could use your help more than ever, especially during the holiday season. So the Beretta M9 is a double single action gun. The M9 is the military designation, the 92 is the civilian designation for the most part. Um, this is actually an M9A4, which I would consider one of the best versions of the Beretta, one of the newest versions. And then we also have the Gerson MC here, which is a Turkish uh, Beretta 92 clone that comes in around 500 bucks. So it's pretty affordable, uh, but we're gonna be mostly discussing the actual Beretta. So it is an aluminum frame, uh, double single action pistol with a frame mounted safety, an open top slide, and pickets any rail. And because of a lot of the feature set on it, people have some problems operating the gun. And the first thing is gonna be, and the most obvious thing in my opinion, is gonna be the slide mounted safety here. The slide mounted safety is done in such a way that can cause really, really bad issues if it happens in the wrong time and or situation. So when you operate the slide of the Beretta, you have to overcome accidentally putting the gun on safety. Now it doesn't really work with the M9A4 because they did uh, some things to actually fix that problem. Whereas on the Gerson Regard, it's more of a natural 92. So if I were to grab the slide in a classic pinch method, like something you would learn on a Magpul DVD, pull back, you can actually induce the gun, or you can actually put the gun in safety. And what that happens then is if you wanna rack the slide and run the gun quick, click, 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 nothing happens, and potentially somebody shoots or stabs you or something terrible happens, which is why you had the gun out and you were trying to use it in the first place. Now, if you're very familiar with the M9 platform, you might know to just knuckle up the safety and then run it out and have it work. But the problem with stuff like that is, and when I see advice like that, is if you get into a competitive setting, a USPSA setting, or a serious situation, you kind of only do what you train to do, and variables become bigger problems than you would imagine. So if you have the gun go on safety and you're shooting that stage, not even a serious life-threatening life scenario, but you're shooting that stage and click, 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 you can't figure out what's going on, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of time wasted tapping and racking and doing all the shit before you're like, oh, my safety's on, and then you go. And if that were a concealed carry situation, a self-defense or home defense situation, those might have been the seconds that could have saved your life. And that isn't just me. I've had many people message me about this. I've had many military guys, special forces guys, all talk about how they don't like the safety on the Beretta M9 or 92 series. I think that problem is even more exacerbated by the fact that they did have one model that had a frame mounted safety, which was the 92X Performance. People love that, people wanted that on more guns and it just simply never materialized. I mean, that's been three, three years now, and they still continue to do the slide mounted safety. Now, they've swept it up a little bit where that's harder to do on the newer models. The, the M9A4, for example, has it slightly angled up, which makes it more difficult, but you can still certainly do it. 
Now, again, with the G models like the M9A4, you'll find that it just turns into a decocker, which is no big deal. But on the classic M9 or 92 series, you're definitely gonna run into that problem, and I think that's something you guys should know about. Now, along the line with the cluttered slide, you're gonna have the open top design of the 92, which has always been a point of controversy. So we have the open top slide here, and there's a lot of problems that go on with that. One, it limits the amount of real estate you have to operate the gun, so it kind of forces you to go back to this, and then you have that problem. But the other issues that you're gonna have with the open top design is that A, it can burn you, especially if you're used to that pinch method, which is very popular with 2011s and Glocks today, for good reason too. Instagram guys, they laugh at that, but if you wanna come up and run it over the top, it's just quicker to actually run the slide, which is why a lot of competition guys do that. The other problem that you run into with the open top design yeah, the open top slide is that you do have more room for debris to get in the gun. I mean, you can obviously see that. So a lot of adverse condition issues with the Beretta M9 because of that design itself. It just seems to logically make sense to me that if you have a slide that's half open, you're gonna get some shit in it every once in a while. Now, the other thing with the open top slide that I believe was fixed at least since the 80s, however, I do hear about it all the time, is it does make the slide more susceptible to cracking. Now they have fixed that and that wasn't an issue for very long. However, you can see that if you were to compare this with the big open cut to something like a Glock, which has a big solid slide, it would make sense that it would be easier to crack as well, especially if you dropped it off a roof or something like that, which does happen occasionally. I mean, you run around a stage in USPSA, I've seen guns go flying out of holsters and break mounts and break optics and stuff. That's not a good idea, by the way, but it does happen. So you want your gun durable, especially for a self-defense situation. Now the third thing I want to go over, which we kind of touched on, is because it has the open top slide, because it has the slide mounted safety, there's just a lot less surface area to run the gun. So if you do have any issues, a lot of the tap rack methods you've been taught on Glock, Smith & Wessons, Sig P320s, any of those guns that will work very well, that are ubiquitous with all those guns, don't really work on the M9. So a lot of the, a lot of the way people run the gun is they run it from the front cuts. Right? There's actual cuts here, like knurling. You can grab a hold of it and run the slide. The issue I have with that is if you go under the bottom, I see a lot of people short stroke the round and it kind of gets stuck there. If you go over the top, it's a little uncomfortable, but it's more likely to work. The other issue I have with that is you're fucking real close to the muzzle and stuff happens when you're moving quick and I don't like that. So when I run Beretta M9s quickly, I don't use this method. If I'm doing it slow, I might kind of grab up here, but if I'm doing it quick, I always try to go over the gun pinch the serrations and try to really get a hold of those serrations so I don't push back and run the slide and I run it like that. Just the way that works for me. Now, another issue related to all those problems is gonna be optic mounting issues. So the Beretta M9 just came out with their first optics mounting system. Uh, Langdon Tactical did that first. I'm not sure if they did it better or not. There's an issue getting plates, so there's not a lot of optics available Beretta M9s out there in the market yet, but the ones that I have seen do make that clutter issue even more apparent. So the only issue, or the only way you can really run the Beretta M9 slide is from this particular area, and then you put an SRO on it, and good luck. You know, you're never gonna be able to reach it. You're gonna end up running the slide off the optic a ton, and when you do that, you can, you can not only break your optic, but you can certainly ruin your zero. And I would say the last thing that's really an issue for most people, not for me, but for most people, is gonna be the size of the grip. Now the Beretta M9 was notorious, especially in the US military, for having too big of a grip for smaller statured people. If you have one gun for everybody, uh, this is gonna be an issue. Now that's one of the reasons why I like the Beretta M9, and that's one of the reasons why I shoot it so well. Because the grip is so big, it sets my finger almost in the exact spot I really need it to to operate the trigger correctly. However, if you don't have big old goon hands like me, it's probably not gonna fit you all that well. Now the nice thing about the M9 is unlike a lot of striker fire designs, you do have the grip panel capability, so you can change the grip center out. These are actually lock grips I just put on here. I think they look pretty sexy. But you can get slim grips, you can get thick grips. The new M9s even come with very thin G10 grips that you can put on if you want. But remember, the grip is still very big by comparison to a lot of the other firearms on the market. And that is why instead of picking a gun online, you really are gonna wanna go to a gun store and you're gonna wanna feel them up and see how they fit in your hand. Overall, I think the M9 is a phenomenal platform for me personally. I think that it's reliable, I think it's durable, I think it's time tested. I think it does have some quirks as far as operating the gun, and I think it has some training issues. And just like a revolver or a pump shotgun or a lever action rifle, they're very, very useful if you know how to use them. You don't short stroke the slide, you don't short stroke the pump, you see where I'm going with this. They are training issues, and if you use the same mechanisms for every gun, you are gonna run into some of the problems that I mentioned. However, if you adopt a new training regimen and you adapt your techniques to the firearm that you're using, you shouldn't have too many problems. That's why the M9 
design has been in service for a long time and it will be for a long time to come, but you have to remember these things and you have to adapt those things to your use. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Dogs didn't make too much noise, but they sure did look cute, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Are you just like this little dog?